a slash command is pretty much like forward slash, give me my stats for the season, all right? What that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and uh, go into, when, when you go into Discord here, you're going to take that image and you're going to paste it into the chat prompt and you're going to tell it what the screenshot is. It takes a couple of seconds of processing. Once the actual custom object detection model is available, it will be a lot faster. We're talking seconds, not above 20 seconds. It is going to return a Rust data structure. And that is at the, the where we got to for uh, the <coughs> event. However, this data structure is very uh, usable in terms of uh, JSON, like serializing the JSON data and then going ahead and printing back the exact scores. Um, as we can see, we have all of some usernames here displaying and their score kills, deaths, and assists, all right? When we look at the app, we are just statically typing the website currently um, to make sure, uh, because uh, due to time constraints, we wanted to make sure we focused on the Discord bot. What type of hurdles were we uh, facing, uh, Clayton, during this? Project. Originally, we were struggling with Tesseract OCR, which is a Python library um, that pretty much scrapes data from images. We were getting inconsistent results, um, and ultimately, it was hard to find universal props for the school board set, which is why we were thinking about going a machine learning route. Uh, ultimately, that will be more applicable to more games for more organizations later on down the road. How are we going to monetize it? Through Discord servers. Discord has its own bot monetize, monetization system where servers get automatically paid for. And ultimately, that money won't be coming from the users, but the organizations who host these tournaments. Um, yeah, and ultimately, this is a much bigger idea and a much bigger software because this is going to be able to uh, send uh, stat, stat, not only stat tracking, but also uh, the ability to do scheduling. How are we doing on time, by the way? You are at five minutes. So Perfect. You want to transition and Thank you very much, and I'll leave it open, the floor open to some questions. Sure. Yeah. All right. So um, let's dive into how important the, this looks like a standard. Yeah. A standardizing uh, performance and mental scholarships. Can you uh, dig into the importance? Absolutely. So schools will track stats. Sorry. Schools will uh, track stats uh, as pretty much like a performance evaluation. So when schools are allocating money to coaching, to players themselves, to other resources that help boost the, um, the esports scene itself, production, thing, things of that nature, um, these stats really, really help them. You know, it, it's a selling point. Stats drive, numbers drive everything, right? And ultimately, when you have a high performing, high KD ratio, a kill death ratio for these players, well, the more you kill people, the more you're probably going to win. It's not maybe directly related, but there is probably a relationship, which we're collecting all of that data, and we will be able to show those relationships, even going potentially as far as fi like finding the relationships we didn't know existed in terms of ping. Like, is, is anyone lag switching? Lag switching is a thing these days. Ultimately, you just turn your Wi-Fi off for a second, you shoot the shot, you turn it back on, and that bullet lags to the kill. I'll pass it on in a second, but uh, just trying to concisely understand the value. So basically, uh, we, this helps us understand how good someone truly is. Yes. That seems to be a challenge for Absolutely. some place. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Competitive landscape is, uh, they're, they're still entering screenshots uh, or statistics manually into a spreadsheet for a reason, because no apps, no, to some extent, companies exist that are doing this currently. Um, we, I personally am in uh, men's and women's leagues of VR gaming. We're all doing manual entry. He's in eSports for college that with millions of dollars at their advantage. 
and they're still entering the screen, uh, the stats manually. The competitive landscape, while we don't think is existent, um, is is very potentially scary because of uh, machine learning only needing 20 images or so to actually train that model. Um, so, does that answer your question? How do, how do the game companies themselves work with this? Um, so, uh, <laughs> a blunt answer is I don't know, but they don't share our, the data with us. No API, the only way we would be able to do it is proxy that base, that traffic, open up each packet, sniff it, figure out what it is, thousands of lines of code later, figure out that that's the score, and uh, you have now spent $200 on extracting game data from. It's encrypted, it's not. Exactly. Ultimately, games use um, encryption as an anti-cheat method, so they mask their scores, they mask all of the data, so that can't be manipulated in the middle. Yes, speaking of which, uh, it just generated a question, right? Like, how do you prevent manipulation of one film stats? So, it, we're, yeah, we're going to be able to classify the model in terms of uh, taking sample sets and actually photoshopping new uh, numbers on a, that image and being able to see that pixel differentiation of saying this has been manipulated or not. We know exactly what these screens look like. We can easily identify that um, there's there's uh, tampering with these uh, screenshots and numbers, and most uh, at least for VR, you're gonna be able to analyze some metadata that you're not gonna have in, from Photoshop that is is gonna be there. Like, most people aren't gonna go to scrape their metadata off the image and. Uh, like these are multiplayer games, right? Yes, so and it's multiple more screenshots. More than one screenshots coming in. Yeah, so the, the, the match ID is going to be able to deduplicate that data. Round of applause for Team Brown. Yeah. 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 yeah, Jet will go. Up next, we got Jet, Team Jet. Jet. With how many T's? Two T's. That's right. Something. Hey. No, that's something. Just I don't know. Your Maybe Tim, you could record me. Alright, I gotta touch this. All right. Team Jet! Team, Team Jet! Woo! Ready? Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Chin Jr. I'm part of Team Jet, which also includes this guy here, Jacob! Say, yeah, Jacob! Yeah. We got Lionel! Hey, yeah, Lionel! We got Tim, the Mastermind, and we got Lee here, and a remote member, also watching from home. Caleb, we are doing so great. Uh, we love this weekend. We're so glad we're all here. Who blogs? Who wants to blog more? Yeah. That's everybody. That's what we do. Isn't that crazy? So we are Jet, and it's uh, machine learning driven AI, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to go ahead and put in a company right now, one that we all love. Has anybody been to three ships yet? Yeah. Downstairs, isn't that great? So if I were like, whoa, um, I'm at freeshipscoffee.com. So this is live, uh, real technology working, and I'm going to research the company. And in the background, what's happening is uh, <clears throat> open AI calls, scraping data calls, uh, web, uh, web scraping. And it's searching for the company, researching it, everything it can, and coming up with 10 blog topics. And the magic is, once you have these blog topics, it will provide you with some feedback. And then you'll say like, oh, blog topic number two or three looks better. From that, we generate personas. And that's where our kind of uh, 
big value add is, is in these personas. It's like if you're working with an agency and you had like a little digital virtual assistant writing for you. Um, and who's used ChatGPT, right? Everybody? Who uses them to write blogs? Okay, how, how are you finding it? Generic. It's okay, it's generic, right? Wow. So how do we continue to make it better and better and better? That's what we're doing. We're taking what, what we know about your business, what you've told us, just in very short, like just a website in your vertical. And then the, the model will take over and through these writing personas, we'll be able to generate a full on blog post about coffee. And then the best part is publish. It'll connect directly to like a blogging platform or your Notion API or some others like Substack. So let's go back to uh, what it has done. So give me a number, 1 to 15, anybody? 11. 11. <laughs> Limited edition flavors. Exploring Three Ships Coffee's unique Pungo syrup releases. Does Three Ships Coffee have Pungo syrup? I'm not sure. I'm it sure does. we can check. It does? Hey, there we go. We came up with a contextually correct blog topic. And so uh, from here, we go into the parts where, like, uh, the teammates have made. So if we were to put in three ships coffee here, uh, this is hidden. This is directly with like a nicer interface, right? This is the less powerful kind of back end, but with the better looking interface. And so the other one is the more powerful back end with a terrible interface. But just in two days, we put them together and we're here to show it off and we are super excited. So you may be wondering, well, where's the validation? Well, I asked for any company, and I got a list of 128. Then I threw the actual companies as a batch process through my back end, and it created 10 headlines for every company, and then we emailed that. We got two responses. Hey. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. This morning. So I didn't, in the email, we didn't mention it was AI generated. We just said, hey, we're at build. We'd love your feedback. Here's 10 free topics. What do you think? And they were specifically tailored to their businesses. And so we had two responses that, that sounds really good. What do we do next? What do we do next? That, they asked me that. What do we do next? Well, I'll tell you what we do next. Uh, we finish out this competition super strong. We're showing that we can uh, continue to integrate with like doing the actual publishing. One minute. Thank you. One minute left means I'm actually showing off you know, our powerful back end, our powerful front end, being able to have these personas. Right, business. Business, business, business. How do we make money? Nobody knows. <laughs> Don't lie. Don't, none of you know how to make money. And I'll tell you what I think we could do. These personas. How many people have a Spotify playlist? How much you love that playlist? Yes. What's going to keep you, like, how do you get that playlist out of there? Personas. You work with your persona. You keep it. It's yours. You love it. You pet it. You feed it. It's doing so many things for you. You're collaborating with it. Jet allows you to be more human with the AI. So when you want to leave Jet, you can't because we got the personas. That's the data gravity. That's the data model. Recurring revenue forever because you want your Jet assistant. And with that time. Nine seconds. Good job. Thank you all. Woo! What questions do the judges have? Questions. I could do business or technical, either one. I built the back end. Very proud. I'm, I'm uh, a bit of equipment here. Uh, Netherlands Inc. Who else is doing something like this? Lots of people. That's <laughs> yours. <laughs> Yeah. What, what, what's makes this different? I, I, I don't think there's anybody that one calls him. So That's right. We'll see. You know, what's the difference? Um, what, junior? Yeah, what's, what's your, uh, yeah, what makes you know? What's your vote? What's your, what, what's your IP? Yeah, so the IP is pretty much in wrangling the AI. Like anybody who's using the open AI, everybody, everybody uses the same open AI APIs, right? But it's that the way you handle the contextual prompts in the beginning and how you keep costs low. Um, our team is made up of, I've been doing this for eight years, like 20, like 20, 28, and uh, 16, 10, 5, 16. and uh, we got a new guy that just learned everything like this weekend, so hands up for him. He didn't do anything next JS, but then this weekend it was like building the full landing page, which Tailwind. is pretty amazing. 
Was that? Tailwind. Uh, and Tailwind. Yeah, so we all try new technology. So what's different? I think this team can just put together exactly what is needed at the time that it's needed. Because we're all using the same APIs. Uh, and it's how you're handling the request to the, uh, to the machine. As I've been using specifically open API since they came out, um, but machine learning longer than that. And it's all about keeping the machine under control. Um, so that's the, how, the how feedback we're loop. Huh? Yep. Does that answer your question? Well enough. Okay. Yeah. Talk a little more about the personas. Yeah. Um, and, they, and now, because it seems to me <clears throat> that may be part of your answer on uh, secret sauce too. Yeah. Can you restate the question for the folks? Uh, so the question is to talk more about the personas and how that may be the secret sauce. Uh, the vision for the personas is, you know, once we have a contextual idea of what your company is, and then your user e feedback on the tone of the titles and the topics, that is just smashed together, and then personas are generated out of that. And so, for example, with the coffee shop, uh, we might have a writer persona that's uh, much more about uh, lifestyle and traveling or you want a different one that's going to be more focused on being productive while you're at the coffee shop. Or maybe you want to go full technical, like flavor bible, about uh, the, the beans. Uh, the personas are generated based on the context that it already has. So the persona that you get is going to be purely unique and different than every other persona that all the other users get. And even if you were to put it in like a second time, you could get a different persona and then steer it that way. So you could have one writing assistant that just does like blog posts, right? And that's what we, well, that's where we steered it right now. If we uh, we had a screen that was like shorter or longer, uh, it can be extended, and your persona can be morphed with a new one that says like this is a Gen Z TikToker, and this one is a B two B consultant, you know, and you can have them all in your playlist, so to speak. And you they are add, generated. If yeah. those personas are persistent to you, so they grow with everything yes, they write. They're they part get of better you. writing for you as they go. Yeah. So you that keep, you keep your business knowledge internal and grow it, as opposed to it being a physical person that could walk out your door at some point. Is that, that good? Yeah. What's, what's your go-to-market strategy? Are you, are you just going to go-to-market strategy? Who's your target? Right now, our go-to-market strategy has been uh, other startups that are in the area uh, that have a relationship with this particular institution. Uh, they are folks that are still trying to find their own product market, and uh, I feel like collaborating with them, uh, because everybody kind of needs extra content like funneled and dripped, uh, and I think that we'll get a lot of good like back and forth feedback from those folks, especially since they already got two. Like I just. Three, three, them, three you, know? you got my yeah. oh, three. three. We got three. Yeah, they just keep coming. You yeah. know, by just they just we just offered them. You know, what do you think about these ten titles? A product like this has a very large applicability in the political consulting field. I was just going to say, there's an election season happening. There's a lot of people in the process. Every year in Virginia. Yeah, we. Yeah, I, I remember the the, the, the robocall days. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? The headset. What's the old headset? Oh, this! Yeah. <laughs> this, folks, is a uh, Tiger Electronics R Zone portable gaming system from 1992. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, he needs his hands to work. He needs his hands to the night. What? I mean, I don't know. Yes! Woo! I don't have $3,500. Okay? My laptop doesn't even hold a charge anymore. So, thank you very much. That's Jet with two T's, because two T's is. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but, but if we win, he's a third of the way oh, there to getting a new headset. You volunteer to go next? All right. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely.